Hi, this is Dr. Bernstein, uh, welcoming, you to, welcoming you to another session of Dr. Bernstein's Diabetes University. Uh, today we're going to look at cardiac imaging studies and uh, risk for uh, heart attacks. Um, for several months, uh, our producer Dave Dykeman has been after me to talk about coronary artery calcium scores and similar uh, imaging studies. Uh, I resisted him because this scenario is constantly changing. There are always new things happening. But then the other day, I received a notice from the insurance company that uh, pays bills for one of my patients, pays pharmacy bills, uh, telling me that he was at heart, high, uh, I'm sorry, that he had a 7.5% risk of dying from a heart attack in the next 10 years uh, according to Framingham guidelines. Well, it happens, first of all, that this gentleman uh, had recently had two studies that I recommended. One was a coronary artery calcium score, which images all of the calcium uh, that uh, appears in the lining of the arteries and actually in the walls of the arteries of the heart and uh, has a good correlation with heart attacks and um, uh, other damage to the heart, especially caused by elevated blood sugars. We also did a, a CT angiogram on this patient uh, which shows any blockages on the inside of the arteries. Calcium score shows calcium in the walls of the arteries. This shows obstruction in the lumen of the artery, the part of the artery where the blood flows. And this man had clean arteries both on the inside and in the muscles. So he had essentially no risk of heart attack. Why did I do these studies on him? Because I thought that it would be a good idea for him to engage in vigorous uh, cardiac exercise, exercise that gets his heart rate up very high. I do this myself, I'm 81 years old. Uh, I try to get my heart rate well above the theoretical maximum. And I think it's a good idea for people who have healthy hearts to do this also. Uh, however, I don't want to give them a heart attack by uh, uh, creating too demanding an exercise if they already have cardiac damage. So that's why I do these tests before prescribing such exercise. Well, lo and behold, this guy was free and clear, yet his insurer was insisting that he has to take statins to prevent a heart attack and they refer to Framingham guidelines. And the same day that I get the no notice th from the insurance company, I read a headline that appeared in several publications that the Framingham guidelines are excessive to the overstate CV risk, cardiovascular risk, by 78%, which means that uh, 78% of the people they say are at risk are not at risk, which means the bulk of the people they say are at risk are not at risk. Uh, this is the sort of thing that's been going on with regard to recommendations about heart disease, diet, etc., etc., over the past uh, uh, 20 years or so. So, how do you interpret all of this? Well, uh, if you're wondering, are you at risk, looking at the standard tests that the Framingham study was looking at, uh, is looking at something that's invalid, looking at total cholesterol, LDL, other than oxidized LDL, uh, and so on, uh, are not you looking at reasonable risk factors, as I've pointed out before, uh, heart disease is 
more accurately predicted by inflammatory markers, uh, things like lipoprotein small a, uh, uh, fibrinogen, etc. Um, but if you want to be more precise in your estimate, you do an imaging study. Uh, however, no sooner did I say this a couple of years ago, uh, and one of my patients had it done. Uh, I had I suggested it because we wanted him to exercise. When he started doing it every three three years, which is ridiculous, because the radiation for these studies is not insignificant. It's quite significant. You don't want to be repeating them over and over again. You do it once, and then you do everything right to prevent uh, an increase in your risk. And that might involve the exercise if it's safe for you. It might involve a low carbohydrate diet. It might involve normal blood sugars if you're diabetic, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but uh, I don't recommend you get irradiated every couple of years. Uh, if you want to do it every 10 years, maybe uh, that might be reasonable. Uh, anyway, that's the story about calcium scores and um, uh, 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 coronary CT angiography. Now, contrary to what many cardiologists have told me, uh, I've seen a lot of side effects from statins in patients who came in for the first time using statins. Uh, they get muscle cramps, uh, some have uh, tiredness, weakness, uh, lack of energy. Uh, we've seen uh, a lot of unpleasant effects, so I don't think that statins should be used if there's no justification. And in this case, where the insurer is recommending statins and there's no justification, uh, it's typical of what's been happening because of the Framingham studies. Uh, before you sign off from this session of Diabetes University, take a look at my book, Diabetes Solution, which uh, you can view at the site listed below or you can purchase from any online bookstore. Also, visit my monthly seminars, teleseminars, uh, the site for getting these free seminars is listed below. Um, you can also uh, join the Diabetes Forum where you can ask questions to other diabetics who have read my book and have been using it. And one last thing is if you go to the teleseminar, you can ask questions which I will answer, uh, if not the same month that you ask the question, uh, within a month or two thereof. Thanks.